So I was cleaning up around here and I actually came across some old awesome stuff. The DVDs and video that I took from my army career 20 years ago. And it seems really crazy to think about that 20 years has gone by. Uh, this January will be the 20 year anniversary of my Iraq deployment. And I was looking around, seeing what else I had and found quite a bit. So in spirit of this Veterans Day and almost 20 years ago, I'd like to share with you my military career from a lens of a camera uh, throughout my various stages. So back then, cameras weren't exactly uh, compact and easy to carry around from place to place, and we didn't get much footage or video from basic training at all. Uh, I don't remember if our particular basic training had a purchase your company DVD, or it would have been VHS back then, uh, but I didn't have that. So this is the only photo I have from basic training, our platoon photo. 1st Platoon, Delta 138 in Fort Benning, Georgia, and I'm in that mess somewhere. It's sort of like a Where's Waldo. My destination was Fort Lewis, Washington, and I got there in late 2002, early 2003. 29th Signal Battalion, which no longer exists. It was changed to the 51st ESB right when I was getting out, so that kind of dates myself a little bit for all you military historians. Uh, back in 2002, there was no smartphone available. You couldn't just pull something out and take a photo or video that easily. Most of the photos that were taken back then was on actual physical film with disposable cameras and you had to get those developed. I didn't bother with any of that. I wish I would have, looking back in hindsight. Uh, but in November 2003, the PX had this thing, the Sony Handycam DCR DVD 101 for $700. $700. It's $93 on Amazon now. I picked that up on a whim and thought, if I'm going to Iraq in two months or so, it would be awesome to record footage of that. Video you're about to see is from the very first night I got back to the barracks and just start recording randomness. So that particular night, we had Scuba Steve, my roommate. You'll see Victoria, who came to our room quite a lot. Uh, we actually paid for internet, so... Our room was kind of like the internet room back in the barracks. Not everyone had internet. And uh, we'll meet Potter, who is a big player in the early part of my military life. All right, we're recording live on DVD. For the so sitting on the couch, there's Scuba Steve, there's Victoria on her AKO chat account. I believe she was talking to a sergeant major back then, but it's crazy to look back and see our rooms. Uh, right. This was our room. My steering wheel's back there, the RS steering wheel. A lot of laps in NASCAR racing and Need for Speed Underground back then. We were the fourth, I think the fourth room in line for that cable connection. So one person used to buy the cable and we would just run cable from room to room to room and everyone would share uh, the cost of the uh, the cable bill. Your images forever burn on a, on a piece of plastic. How does that make you feel? Forever burn on a piece of plastic transferring okay. now to YouTube and the internet, which was still about four years away. Yes, I am. Scuba just came back from Thanksgiving weekend. It's oh, a, yeah. It's the Sunday before we got to go back to work. Sundays before you go back to work back then sucked. It was Monday inspection, make sure your uniform is pressed. We were in BDUs back then. Make sure your boots were shined to a high degree. That's the part of soldiering I didn't really get into. So these figures, the NASCAR figures came from games, or yeah, GameStop. And people thought when they came to the room and saw those figures, this was an exorbitant amount of NASCAR stuff. Way too much NASCAR stuff that a normal person should have. I, of course, am not a normal person. Yes, the Do Not Disturb Blood Alcohol Experiment in Progress is still there. Yeah, I don't know who put that poster up. That was in there when me and Steve moved in. Uh, we moved in at about the same time, and this was an open room for both of us. So, yeah, we just moved in and left that poster there. It, I would say it's still there, but the building no longer exists. GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation 2 are still there. Yeah, I believe the GameCube was mine, the Xbox was mine, and the PlayStation was Steve's. And we would play Gran Turismo, I think it was 3, back then quite extensively. 
Which... Yeah, yeah. Okay, but three. Yeah, right. Nicole is still there. So Young pays us a visit. Big car guy. Used to play Gran Turismo with us from time to time as well. Win. Potter! He really enunciated the win. He didn't say if, he put win. He's the man, the man, the legend. What? No, they're in there. They're not your beer. Good job, Potter. You don't drink it. Somebody has to. I would have if it was still in the fridge. Good job, Potter. That's my guy. Quit bitching it. Quit bitching it. It's right here. It's right here. That one beer better be here. It's okay. It's okay. It's right here. That one beer better be here. Quit your bitching. Quit your bitching. What do you call this? Beer. Oh, I'll drink it if it was in the fridge. Got it out of the fridge. And it's going back in the fridge. Good damn it, Potter. Fucking smart ass. So deployment to Iraq was one month away, but a few weeks after that first recording, myself, Potter, Scuba Steve, and a guy named Solanke wanted to celebrate Solanke's birthday at Hooters. I decided let's just bring the camera. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Hey Nelson, where are we going? We're going to Hooters. Are you sure? Why are we going to Hooters? To see the Hooters. That works. That's some goofy shit right there. So. That's one of the pictures that exists from our time in Yakima. Uh, myself and Solanke went to Yakima to be firefighters. They put a big old water tank on the back of the Humvees. And like I said, you had to develop your photos uh, if you took any pictures back then. But that was a pretty fun field exercise. There's our... Yeah, the grass 428. That means grass. That means not brush, not... Not, uh, we're, we're trying to handle grass. Yeah, I like the brush one. Was Ingles cool. truck sucks ass. That that truck well, sucks old so truck. much. Now he drives a Sergeant Major. For our particular engine. Motor. Potter's back. It's fucking ridiculous. Did you steal 14 gas? 14 gallons for 20 bucks. 14 gallons yeah. for 20 you bucks. A dollar 42 for gas slave. back then. Oh, oh if only. So after a meal discussing the new Sergeant Major that just arrived at the 29th Signal Battalion, Adam was placed on a stool and celebrated for his birthday. And that was a big step for Adam because he's not usually a people person. He didn't put himself in front of a lot of people and get a lot of attention uh, on himself. So for him to stand up on a bar stool and do I'm a little teapot was uh, unique. And dude in the red shirt, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are, but if you're still out there, welcome to my YouTube video. I was too busy being made a retard out of it. Let me see that. I say we put this one there. I tried. I tried. I don't know the song. Was that fun, ladies? No. I didn't think so. I had fun. You had fun? What was yeah. the most fun, sadly? When you guys were gone? Ha ha. Alright. Well, ha. since you did, are, are so proud of your. So for thinking you can get a ride home. Dude, she uh, she's did you not hear her say that she gets off in half an hour? I'd have to wait half an hour. <laughs> you wanna go, Steve? Let me know. I don't care. That's Do what a, you want. That's a yes. That's, that's a, a yes. yes. So it's determined. Steve wants to go back and try to get a ride back to post from a Hooters girl. So back at Hooters, Steve is adamant he is going to get a ride back. Let him out. Best of luck, Steve. Only if things don't work out. How do you think this is going to turn out? Yeah. Oh, he calls. This is probably Steve. Come pick me up. He's like she's gone already. Yep. What? Oh, she has a husband and he has a car. Oh, it's nice for you. Uh oh. Steve cannot get a ride from Hooters. 
So a back and forth ensues between Potter, me, and Steve. I have Potter's phone, and Potter wants Steve to swallow his pride, admit that he uh, was wrong, and Potter would then pick him up across the street. He's not going to make it easy on Steve, and Steve would not budge. He wanted to be picked up from Hooters right where we left him, so 20 minutes goes by where it's back and forth. Potter said, Scuba said, I said, Potter said, and finally we relent. We're still here. So knowing Potter, what do you think he's going to do when Steve walks out to his truck? There he is. Little bitch. I'll wait till he gets about two into the street. Look at him walking all suave up. I'll wait till he gets to the street, then I'm going. What, so just take off? Yep. Ready? Ready. Go. <laughs> He's like, I hate you, Potter. Better, Jeff. So if you try calling me, uh, it's probably an answer. Okay. Dude, I told you I could have been here all night. Yeah. All right. But you know what we should have agreed on? But we did say, hey, there's other Hooters girls. You know what we should have agreed on? That if Stadler lost, he should have to watch Potter's truck in a cheerleader's uniform. Yeah. All right. So welcome to the barracks, back after an eventful night. Yeah, Steve just heads off. Here's our day room, and uh, by the time we get back, as rumors tend to do, they already knew about Steve. What's he doing in there? What's he doing in there? I'll be out in a second. Oh, playing your little D&D Yeah, Polarski was the DM, probably playing a D&D. So, how's uh, Scuba doing? <laughs> oh, he, he got back. He stormed off. I see the cameraman. Dude, we're done. Yeah, camera Nelson. Dude, night's over. It's still recording, Nick. Let's go. Hey, don't break it. Don't break I'll, it. I'll get those cameras. Hey, let me get the door. Let me, let me get it. I'll bust it open. Fuck. Fuckers. Is their game that important? Yes, yeah. you don't walk in on no, an, on a D&D &D campaign. Mike with it. CQ desk? Can't tell what he's playing. This would have been late 2003. Okay, turn it off. <laughs> Not my CQ area. <laughs> Sport heads. Get the fuck out of here unless you want to watch a movie. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what about the secret stunner looking ass? Okay, let's get out of here. He's a joke. So this was the wing I was living in on the uh, second floor. God damn it. Fuck you, Potter. Yeah, right, he's gonna put the camera. Oh, there it is. Hey, Baez. Baez. We'll see you later. It's a sure. Saturday night, man. It's not quiet. Hi, everybody. Saturday night. This place is gay. I guess with a right month here. before deployment, everyone was wanting to get as far away from here as possible. Hey, it's Wicker. Stop the press, dog. <laughs> no, no questions. No more questions. <laughs> there you go, right there. Okay, dog. Well, you ready? Ready. ready. He actually just made his master sergeant a uh, few last month or the month before. No, Big Sarge still putting in the work these days. Good on you, Rainy. So just a few weeks after the Hooter shenanigans, it's time to leave for deployment. This is Causing, uh, who I got to know really well during that year before deployment. Lots of lunches, cruising around I-5, all that good stuff. And this was the day we left for Iraq. Videotaping at mom. Hey, it's cool, man. Where's Neil? Right there. Hey, that videotape that like. Oh shit! Neil! Neil is calling you. He's, he's very. He's concentrating, bro. He wants to shoot the saw, man. Yeah! Shout out from our from Kuwait, buddy. Hey, I'm gonna do the same thing when I get back. Yeah. Hey, Rainy, this is a lot better. Straight to DVD. Yeah, straight to DVD. 
Mine's a straight cheaper. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sergeant Lay there. He would deploy with us again the second time around. That's my future teammate, Bullis, in Korea. There's Solanke. And up comes Mendez. Mendez. There is a lot of dirt here. I could they call it sand. I can imagine it. Yeah, Kuwait was more of a desert experience yeah, than Iraq was. This is our temporary stay until we make our four hour convoy later. I'll record more once we get to our permanent training station. And we are heading to Balad, LSA Anaconda. So no footage from the convoy up north, of course. We left from Kuwait up to Balad. We actually uh, were told to avoid Fallujah at this time. In hindsight, there was a very good reason for that. But we ended up uh, passing up the Fallujah exit. But then we turned down the Baghdad exit and ended up steering our entire convoy to downtown Baghdad, had to U-turn and leave. And that was when I was at the most, like, amped up. Um, nothing happened. We got to LSA Anaconda and we set up shop uh, at the uh, headquarters building at Anaconda. My job was to uh, run phones to the inside of the building and provide phone service for everyone inside. And we go now into the tent we are living in just outside the main building. So there's Vanderzil, Bullis, and Sergeant Sear. Uh, Sergeant Budiger lived in an attachment, and uh, that was AFN. We were actually able to get some TV uh, coverage in the tent. Uh, here it is. Saddam's prison lover tells all. Uh, <laughs> come on, gang. Can I take a picture of you? Here's my team, Bob. There was uh, Korea's Hooch. And uh, that, that's the, the high-speed cameras that everyone had about that time. So I don't know if uh, Sergeant Sear has any of those pictures left, um, but he's still doing well from what I see. Hello, Sergeant Sear. And there's Bullis. That's freaking disturbing. Oh, yeah? You got a picture of uh, Freeberg doing that. Yeah, that's Freeberg. Yeah, well, I'm going to download this. As soon as Korea comes back in, I'll go. I'll do this in time. You gonna leave one? Yeah. All right. I'll be in there a little bit later than to send a couple emails. That's what I was doing until he fucking told me. Because I had to piss. <laughs> you your laptop? Yeah. Tell me the fuck out. Uh, I was kidding. Hey, you know, I can't I can't do it because then I'd be discriminating me being a bad guy, but I can't tell you guys you can't have it out with me. All right. You're not telling us? No, like, go, go tell, him, tell him he's fucking being inconsiderate. I, I, I think he's being inconsiderate. You think he's being inc inconsiderate, Nelson? Yep. I told him he's being inconsiderate. Everybody thinks he's being inconsiderate. I don't beat his ass back in the yard a couple times. All right. Oh, fuck that. We're cooking that, bitch. We're talking the defect. Oh, I was talking to Sergeant Lay, too. Um, it's, uh, he said it should be a problem to find a way to grill out here. If what? I don't know if I want to grill that, dude. Not serious. <laughs> Not this stupid. Oh. Meat's all bad, anyways. I don't know. It looks pretty healthy. Uh, I've been eating fucking peanut butter and cheese from last week. Yeah, no shit. The, uh, his brain went okay. through he his beak. Came down with, oh, <laughs> trying to catch it. <laughs> his brain came out of his beak, huh? Yes. All right. All right, guy. I shift. I expect that to be gone by the time I get that. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, 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 you definitely have shift. Take it all the trash and take it all the trash. That's fucking weak. So a few months of switching on and off shift shot was in but we were pulled out of system shortly after that so that more phones could be put in the building our shelter could only provide so many they moved in a team that could provide more phones so i had a week where i was really not doing anything so i thought let's record monday through sunday um what i was just doing that day so this is my day to day and it's monday uh, 7.43 in the morning. Uh, we're Memorial Day Monday. We're supposed to take the motor pool today, but they're breakfast. So, me and Bolas, there's Bolas, are waiting for Sergeant C and the rest of the people to get back from Chow. Um, so, uh, they weren't at Chow. Oh yeah, this is our site, or was our site. And there's our sin, our generators. This building that the Iraqis left for us. That's where the, uh, the camoed fence. pigeon was. <laughs> That's where we used to sleep, but now I got trailers, so it's all good. Uh, other than that, we'll get them when they come back. There's Freeberg. 
go this way. You go ahead. I'm coming over. Here. I'll give you five minutes. There's Freeberg. Good morning. Good morning, Freeberg. Actually, no, it hasn't. They haven't showed up yet. It's uh like. 7.50 no, no. and they still haven't showed up yet. It's a good morning. Oh, Melissa sorry. has Mondays off. Today is Monday. It's a good morning. Who's Melissa? Air Force chip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't met her, but... How, how, how does that make it a good morning? She's got the day off. Big fucking deal. Whoop dee big deal. Ooh. Ooh, the Air Force has Monday Ooh. off. Ooh. Maybe she can come over. Yeah, she will. Yeah, she will. And maybe you can show her more pictures of your brother. So Sergeant Sear came out of the tent and told Bullis to start pushing. I don't think he's gotten up yet. Yeah, Sergeant Sear just came out the door and realized he was late and making Bullis push for it. Yeah, that was uh, a mandatory Kevlar time. You had to have body armor in Kevlar wherever you went. Um, Sergeant Sear. Well, see you later. Bye, Bullis. They couldn't get me on a fucking plane today. Obviously, because you're standing here. My asshole just got wired. Your asshole just got wired? Wider. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of you guys said Nelson or Freeberg. Pretty much harder work to do. Score. Oh, God. And with that, we cue the music. Matt, Matt, Matt. 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 Matt, My team chief. Cujo. Or Sergeant Buttiger. Hi, Cujo. I think he just got done dropping off Castaneda at CLS class, if I'm not mistaken. So, did you get him there? I guess oh, yeah. you don't have Castaneda with you anymore. Who's at the class? Yeah, How'd that turn out? It didn't have to be there, so... I don't know, they didn't even have a time. That's so breakfast. Yeah. Ready to head to the motor pool, kinda. We gotta wait for a trailer to be picked up. Right back. What do you say? He'll be right back. Alright. Oh, way to go, Freeberg. He curbed it. You sure you don't want me to drive? I guess you went left. I'm not. Oh that. yeah! At least I took that corner. I wasn't allowed to drive because I, I took like that left right left that chicane speed. at a pretty high speed. There's Didn't hit anything. Power. And then over there is our trailers. They're clear right? Clear right. But yeah, the shower trailers were just at the end of this road. Is that him up there? Yeah, that's him up there. And the movie theater was right there too. We saw in that movie theater we saw a butterfly There's effect. A we saw Oh, Team America World Police came out, and that was the loudest yeah, I've yeah, ever right seen a movie theater, was when uh, Team America Police sure. theme song came on and a bunch of soldiers were watching it. That was, that was America embodied right there. Yeah, they just started putting in yeah. those, uh, those trailers. We just moved in one not too awful long before this. Oh, there's no get up and go with these things. Yeah, that's our chapel, that big hole in the ground. Haha. <laughs> chapel 2B. Water tower. Alright. Over there is our motor pool. What kind? You'll see more later. This is our motor pool, nothing fancy. We generate our mechanics over yonder. But yeah, this is where we bring our trucks to service. Hard working mechanics. James and Chief had a. Hey James and Chief had a. Hey Freebird. What's up? Oh yeah, replacing the fuel filter. So if you ever wanted to know where the fuel filter was in a Humvee, yep, it's uh right there. Operator level stuff. I only replaced one fuel felt one fuel filter my entire time in the army. Shower time is a special time for the muff rats. Huh? <laughs> I'm gay, huh? So I'm gay, huh? I'll yeah. my camera. Yours aren't as cool as mine. Na 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 na. 
straight to DVD, baby. <laughs> oh, right. right. Ooh, oh, watch, watch him deep throat it. Go, go. Go the porn. Deep throat the porn. Do it. Do, do it. it again. Do it again. Do it. Do, do it again. It. Come on. Do it again. Do it. Do it. That's pretty much against the odds. Yeah, and then Wolf's is back there too. <laughs> Good news. We were just given a temporary mission. So we're moving all of our equipment to replace these guys. Hopefully we'll get the same thing and go home. This is what you call a really jacked up job. No one knows what's going on. We'll figure it out in a minute. To be continued. Well, Monday is almost over. Yeah. Castaneda Freeburg. Can't see if our antenna's up there. That's our spot. What a great way to end Memorial Day. Yeah, yeah great way to end Memorial Day. Our site's all set up. Our shots are good. Is this your first Memorial Day? Shots actually perfect. Today is Tuesday. Last night was a late night. Got back at 12:30. Woke up again at 5 to go escort our shit outside of our. Came back at around 3 o'clock. Got cleaned up. That's right. And now I'm back on site. Now you can actually see what our site looks like. Didn't come out too well at night. Did pictures yeah so Tuesday is already half over so this is gonna be a short day <laughs> man the myth the legend of Tuesday Potter this was originally his site yes then yes. he moved then they kicked me out and sent me down to Mortar Alley then so far I've survived but it's really it took over this, shit. Yeah. this, this yeah. is the remnants and then once I thought I got rid of Bader H they sent it back really <laughs> Wait, did you guys hear what they did to the new guy? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess our painter has a new guy, PV2. They sent yeah. him to go get exhaust samples today. <laughs> he ran down to the motor pool with a bag of exhaust. And they sent him back here saying that the bag leaked. PV2 Castaneda is getting promoted. PFC. So Nelson getting promoted to PFC the specialist. Damn it, Freeberg. Bullis got his specialist that day too. Air's first sergeant Noyes. They said do a speech or push-ups, and I started a speech. They made me do push-ups. Yeah, it's just me closing out Tuesday. It's uh, eight o'clock at night. I'm getting ready to go on shift in an hour, so uh, I work 12 hours till nine in the morning Wednesday. Probably sleep in until like 3 in the afternoon and oh well, I'll catch up with you then. Now it's Wednesday. Uh, the sleeping in part didn't happen the way I planned. Turns out that 9 o'clock rolled around and Sergeant Sear and Sergeant Buttiger brought camouflage to the site. So right now we're debating on whether to put up camouflage tonight and if so that'll happen at we're just getting attacked. I'll continue this later. This is our shelter. <coughs> this is where we run and hide. Right outside our trailer. Not the most attractive thing, but it, it works. Alright. Back from the alarm, back from the alteration shop. Got this done. Specialist. Yeah. All my chores are done and it's 2.05. Oh. Yeah. And I'm still no word on whether I gotta be at the site at 6 or not, but yeah, Wednesdays are usually nothing like this. Usually there's like a class at 2. And that's usually all we do all day. Same thing for Mondays. This has just been an unusual week. And you haven't seen the trailer, so this is my space I'm living in. Check it out. Right. The TV, the window, my laptop. Bullis' is bed. It's broken. So he's stacked bricks under it. His wall locker. 
Moving around to my wall locker. In my bed, which I'm sitting on right now. It's something like a dorm room, I suppose. Air conditioner works, which that's a plus. Uh, other than that, this is our room. The pool is actually across the street from here. That's the indoor pool. There's Sergeant Benares. I uh, got up to 107 today, uh, which I was out in mostly. So uh, that's it for now. If I go to the side, I'll continue on. See you later. You don't need to go wide at all. Hey, did you get did you get my explanation of the camouflage on tape? Not quite. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> this is my wall. This is the Great Wall of Dawn. Right no, it's here. not. It's the Great Wall of Podgy. I was fucking out here. Great Wall of Dawn. Yeah, you were doing push-ups all day. Hey, grab that diamond bullet. You just got to fucking work with it. Alright. It does. There it is. That lights up a lot more. These guys spread it out some. Look at the beam. Look at the size of that beam. Son of a bitch. I got fucking sweat in my eyes. Look at that. Lights up the whole side of that camouflage over there. Ugh. Like the ground from my foot all the way to the camouflage. Generator's full. You can see through the fucking, <laughs> see through the the fucking shelter. The generator's full. You can see through the fucking gas can. Through the fuel tank. <laughs> fuel can. Alright. So. I think everybody earned Wait, the, the morning light. off, except for the going off. off. Except for the Yeah, I guess Nate's got to go to class tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Except I'm for, let's see, who's doing day shift tomorrow? Who did day shift yesterday? Lowell's at Freebird? Yeah, yeah. Lowell's Freebird, yeah. Okay, so tomorrow is Korea Nelson day shift, Lowell's night shift. Lowell's come in at about... 8.30. 7. See if we got anything going on. We shouldn't. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get with you during the day. You still want to put that tent up in here? Yeah. yeah we gotta, we gotta take a hey, does that have night vision? Yeah. Oh, it right? does? I'm using it. No way. Yeah. Hey, Nelson, now I can do that. You got tape? Wait, wait, hold it, hold it. You hold it? Yeah. Keep holding. Yeah, Keep he's going to do what you think he's doing. Oh, that's freaking <laughs> wrong. <laughs> oh, I thought somebody took a picture. <laughs> <laughs> can I look, can I look at it? Yeah, go ahead. All right, that's fucking nice. If you nice. drop your pants again, I'm gonna throw a handful of dirt in your ass crack. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. make you walk home. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Nelson's gotta fucking take a picture. Do it. I'm telling you. Do it. Oh. Deep throat the court. Huh? Deep throat the court. Probably get. You're deep throat the court. Super nice shot. I'll go to the tent. Okay, it's crazy. Butterger counselors are due by fucking ten. Oh. Yeah, so the night vision had a mode that was like HDR, but it really chugged the frames. So I just kept it on regular night shot. Just tomorrow morning, go over to the company. That's what I'm going to do. Tomorrow before I come here, I'm going to go to the company and bring them out. Put them on the memory this day's over. See you tomorrow. The Iraqi local nationals finishing up this wall. They built that wall from there all the way around to there in about 45 minutes. These guys are quick workers. Getting our sandbags from the site we took over. There's our supervisor. Today, after we built the wall, I went to finance and got my rank approved. Not approved, but made aware to finance so I get paid as an E4 next month, or actually the 15th of this month. I gotta clean this. I found out that I was doing this about a half hour ago and it's 9-11 right now. But the difference between this time and last time is I can actually get some sleep this time instead of being told three hours before I have to show up. So that's good. And SST really isn't a bad thing. We show up at 5.50, get inspected at 6, and then we sit there and we wait for 10 trucks to pull up to the east gate. Then once we get 10 trucks, we take them outside the bar, we bring them back and we wait for 10 more. Last time I pulled it, we did two runs, one at 11 o'clock. So we waited there from 8 to 11, doing nothing. Took those trucks out, came back at say 11.30. 
Then we went to lunch, came back, waited until 2, 2.30ish, took out 10 more, and we were done for the rest of the day. Well, I wasn't done. I had to go back to site and help put up camo. Now tomorrow, I got to put up a tent. And my team chief will probably move into that tent so there can be an NCO on site at all times. That way, two soldiers ain't got to pull day shift like we are doing now, which is going to save us a lot of time in the future. Right now, we're pulling 12 on, 12 off, 12 on, 24 off. And we just repeat that. Except when details come down like this, where we're told the night before that they need to give up a saw gunner, and I had to pull it for them. Welcome to Friday, riding with Baez and Sarn Benares on the way to the laundry point. In that whole family. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Yeah, we got an hour till we gotta be at Eastgate, so we're just screwing around right now. This is what our trucks was turned into a freaking submarine. Look at these windows. Here's our laundry point. Turn in laundry there, pick it up. There, three days later. So yeah, we would leave East Gate. All those trucks would be in front. We were the rear gunner at this point. And all the trucks would go maybe a block over. We didn't have to go far. It wasn't like a big, long, all-day affair. We could get off post and then back on in less than 30 minutes or so if everything was, was kicking off. One time a hose did break free off the back of one of those septic trucks and got the driver with full force. I wasn't on that particular one, or I would have filmed it for sure, uh, but yeah, that's, that sucks. Block off this road and post up. Nothing really, you know, no one came to bother us Good all the way. out here. Good. You're going up a hill though. Yeah, with all the weight of the, the hard doors and the freaking right windows, I'm surprised these trucks had the power to yeah, back up that hill. Here. That's where the second truck goes. Yeah, yeah. There's the, the, the SST drop off. And make sure nothing gets put on these yeah, trucks. Oh, the other kid, no, it wasn't the same kid, it was the other kid. He was asking for this shit and that shit. Hey, you wanted that little tiny scratch, he wants my fucking pressure dressing and all the other bullshit out there. He has a little Robitussin. Do that right up. Robitussin. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday. Uh, I worked lighter last night than I thought I would. We got off at 3 o'clock and I came back to the site and helped out there for a couple hours. And like at 5.30, I was called again saying I had to get back on SST detail because if the trucks didn't leave, our showers wouldn't work. So that's why I worked late last night. And I was put on night shift tonight, so I was able to sleep in today. It's actually 12.41. Just made a nice cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, hot chocolate in the desert. It's kind of ironic, I know. But, that <laughs> craving for hot chocolate is like the only chocolate I get. So, I take what I can get. So, yeah, today I don't know if I have any plans or not, but I might head up to the PX or something. I don't know. I might just chill here and watch movies until 7 when I go get dinner, but that's the scoop. It's the latest. Well, it is Sunday, but it's not. June 7th, it's actually Sunday, July 4th. Uh, last month's been really busy with the site, and I've been working day shift every day for the past two weeks. So I haven't had a lot of time to record. The hooch that the muff rats built. No, it's depressing. Yeah. Don't worry, I, I got this. All right, yeah, you'll take pictures for the book. Dude, man. Tony Hawk. I am the Muff Rat Commander. The Muff Rat Commander. I am the Commander. <laughs> and Konnichiwa Sanke. And my board winning smile. Yeah, right.
Yeah, we built this in the, about a week and a half. But this is where I work in there. <laughs> Actually, I work in there, but we always keep it locked because that serves more purpose than that. Oh, there's our guy on my design. We are the Muff Rats. So the name Muff Rats came along. We were a brand new team, so we didn't have any established history of Alpha 6.5. Alpha 6.5 was just pieced together before we deployed. And we were sitting in the dining facility, and all of a sudden we heard on the BBC something about 16 people were stranded on a Muff Rat. And we thought that was the funniest thing ever. We don't know if that's what she actually said, but that's what it sounded like. And from that day on, we just became the Muff Rats. And I designed the guide on kind of based off the old Mighty Ducks logo. And we just had it, you know, sent alterations. They put it on a flag and Alpha 6-5 was the Muff Rats, at, at least until we got back. I, I doubt they're the Muff Rats now, but if Alpha 6-5 is still there in the 51st ESB, you are the Muff Rats. Yeah, right? It's our not. <laughs> We're lucky and got the first chuck out. This is the PAX terminal. This is where everyone's waiting to fly out. Supposedly our flight leaves in about 15, 20 minutes. My stuff's on a pallet and we're ready to go. Six hours later, still here, waiting on our plane. Supposedly it never came, so we got another one to take its place. Good news. We're in the air-conditioned tent now. We uh, got a plane, and as soon as it comes in, we'll be uh, loading up on it and going to Kuwait tonight. So, that's a plus. Here we are, upwards of 18 hours after we should have left. We finally made it to Kuwait. Waiting for customs. Every bag here has to be checked. This is the freedom room. Got our plane tickets. Now we just chilling. It's the line for tickets. Line for customs. Pretty cool place. Well, we're in the United States now. Just landed in Dallas. Have a good time. Thank you, sir. So it was time for a new team to be formed, Alpha 6-8, and no one was ever assigned to it, so they had to pull one person from every team to fit the role. And we always joke that this was the all-star team, that the, the leadership had the entire choice of if we were to make a new team and we had everyone available, who would they choose? And I was on it, along with Causing and Solanke, as well as Sergeant Menares and Sergeant Aldridge. So... We've sort of formed the best of the best, as we like to say. So here we wa were waiting for our trucks to be delivered. Causing had his Gatorade. And the thing about the Gatorade powders that we got in either care packages or the PX is they were in solid form. You open up the powder and the powder was solid as a rock. So you'd take your, your Gerber and you'd just sort of chip at that powder to break it even. But plenty of water bottles around. And of course, Solanke with his board winning smile. So setup night, as I said before, in Signal Corps, your first nights are your latest nights. So we swapped out with a team that was already there. I don't remember if they were getting pulled out of system for, the, for good and packing up and getting their trucks gone. This was um, two months before the end of deployment, so maybe they just weren't needed anymore. But me and Solanke there on night number one. And of course, Causing was there to assist me on my side. Solanke was a 31 Fox, so he was on the switchboard side. There's our platoon sergeant, Sergeant Lay. Uh, he came to inspect to make sure that the, everything, you know, was put in system adequately, just sort of watch us work. He had came from Charlie Company to Delta, so at this point we really weren't uh, um, apprised as to what made Sergeant Lay tick. We only knew him as sort of this... Uh, 
uh, instructor that during field exercises, he was the hardest to impress. He was by the book, knew every Army regulation backwards and forwards. He was the guy that if you said, hey, Sergeant Lay, I had a soldier who defaulted on a loan payment. What kind of article is that? And he would say that falls under Article 82 and Article 75 and Article 15. And here's why. And he would have the verbiage like he was a guy that knew his regulations through and through. And there's Sergeant Benares, mine and causings team chief for the new Alpha 6-8. So on my Toshiba laptop, we uh, I had an emulator for PlayStation games. So in my big old CD wallet, I put all of my PlayStation games in. And uh, me and Sergeant Aldridge, we played Hot Shots Golf 2 a lot. So coming off the back of the shelter, we had where the trucks were lined up at, the wooden shelter behind it, and we had this tent on the backside. So this is where we could uh, set up cots or keep some stuff out of the sun. Not in, as elaborate a setup as 6.5, because we were not going to be in system for long. We were just sort of an afterthought to, 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 fill in a, to fill in a gap, really. And because we were getting into the winter time, the, definitely the fall towards the winter, Iraq got really rainy and really wet. So Sergeant Moneris was driving around and he noticed these uh, water bladders that were being taken out. And he asked if we could have one of those you know, water bladders. And we were going to drip, drape it over the gap between the building and the trucks. There was a gap there that water would find, but not if we dripped one of those waterproof tarps over it. And of course we had to stage some photos for the company. So here was Solanke and Sergeant Moneris hard at work and I'm just chilling in the back. And here's the fruits of our labor. That waterproof tarp was pretty heavy. <laughs> All kidding aside, it was pretty heavy, but once we got it you know, draped over our trucks, it was you know, nice and cozy. And luckily, we were able to get AFN on the site, and uh, Sergeant Aldridge was a big Jeff Gordon fan. I was Dale Jr., and this was the height of the DEI dominance at the plate tracks. This was uh, myself and Sergeant Aldridge watching that October Talladega race when uh, Dale Jr. said, It doesn't mean shit. Daddy's won here, here 10 times and got fined 25 points. This was about mid-race. You know, we were pretty, pretty locked on. Didn't know that Junior was about to say what he would say in Victory Lane. So we get a notification from the company that, hey, we would like to have pictures of your site and your soldiers doing work. So, of course, there were some staged photos. So just me grabbing my Gerber, uh, adjusting the mats, even though they didn't need to be adjusted. Sergeant Benares just picked up a saw and just started cutting into a random piece of plyboard that we had laying around. I was really hamming up the hammer. Sergeant Aldridge just picked up some of those mats and carried them around the building once. And there was our board. Oh, and Causing had to go to the CQM range, apparently. So me and Causing were on night shift, and we took this time to get the floor done. We could see Causing hard at work there, and then we also had to get sandbags on the outside of the truck. So there is the tea barriers coming in. Ideally, the idea was to make it where if any indirect fire hit on the outside, nothing would roll in. We did have one truck be destroyed and a couple injured soldiers in our unit. And it was from a bounce of indirect fire going through the generator, hitting the ground and rolling under the truck and then exploding. Um, both those guys made it back. Um, luckily, no one was killed. But... From then on, we had to make sure that our trucks were always surrounded by something to stop indirect fire from hitting and going under the trucks. Late one night, Shields decided to come by, and there we had those tra uh, trapezoid bunkers not too far off away. So Sergeant Benares causing, and uh, Shields went in to investigate. Here we go. We're in the bunker. Yeah, we're, good. we're fucking... What do you call that? We're adventurers, man. It's like a freaking... Still filming? Yeah. Dude, yeah. There's some crazy place right here. They said Saddam was here a few months ago. There's another room right here. Where? Is she on the right? Oh, it's just a pathway. Never mind. Oh. 
Is that the boom boom boom? Probably when they busted the door open. Mm -hmm. How's it go outside already? Okay. I, I think you went outside. me and Kazin got to work either the next night or the night after um, getting the sandbag set up in the front of the truck. Obviously, we didn't want to put the tea barriers in front of the truck because if we had to roll out, then we would have to call a crane to lift that crap up. But sandbags, we could just blast through Michael Bay style. Solanke hamming up the camera doing his PMCS. Um, every Monday, we would go, we look at the trucks, look for leaks, all that good stuff. Preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance checks and services. And that's just Solanke showing he's doing a good job. And I can't tell who that one is, but we did find a leak. And on that notepad of Solanke's, he had all the crap that was wrong with that truck. It ended up being a metric crap ton that maintenance would have to come and uh, fix for us. Like right there. Door strap torn, side seat, brakes a class 2 leak, coolant line class 1s. So they, the way it they had classes is a class one leak was just sort of wet a class two leak drips were starting to form and a class three leak it was actively dripping on the ground and to go along with the checks and the maintenance that we had to do our 5k generator was stalling on us uh, each team had two generators a five kilowatt and a 10 kilowatt and we would alternate so that generators could be serviced all that good stuff and we didn't put all of the load on a generator well this poor 5k was uh, giving up the ghosts welcome to the atrocity that is 5k sergeant mason our generator mechanic extraordinaire is wondering why the generator won't run for more than three minutes Thus completes our first deployment to Iraq successful. So one of the jokes about, hey, what are you going to spend your money on when you get back from deployment? We'll have all of this tax-free dollars just sitting in our bank account. What are you going to spend it on? And I'd always joked around, I'm going to grab an early 90s Lumina, and I'm going to put all kinds of Dale Earnhardt decals on it, make it as close to a street-legal race car as I could, and I was perusing eBay Motors for said Lumina and came across this. And I said, wait, this is kind of exactly what I wanted. A newer car, 2001 Monte Carlo, and all of the decals were already on it. So, did I buy it? You're damn right I did. Of course, coming back from a year-long deployment, people want to celebrate. As far as Freeberg was concerned, he was going to have a house party uh, on, I believe, Ocean Shores, or I forget exactly where, but he rented out a place. Things were looking up until the dang thing started. I know it's tough when you're forgotten, isn't it? That's right, folks. I was forgotten. I know what it's like. Hey, hey. 
And Castaneda was the only one who was looking out. I thought we were leaving at a certain time, and uh, no one even realized I was missing. So Castaneda thankfully remembered and came back. And uh, this is where me and Castaneda really started to, to hit it off and spend a lot of time together. And I said, you know what, I can't believe you forgot, I'm gonna go pick him up. I took it upon myself. We were all gonna go. Everybody was gonna go, but I How about like, that? So, as an afterthought, people are like, oh, well, we forgot him. It's too late to go back now. So, Castaneda turned around, thankfully. Thank you, Castaneda. Did you ever see the wild party in an animal house? It's the same good if you want. So, first stop was Hoquiam, which is where Freeburg was from. And, uh, yeah, the people around the neighborhood saw a bunch of cars just sort of park up that they didn't know. Yes, that's a cop. They called the cops on us. showed up because there's hoodlums outside. <laughs> Which, of course, Freeburg had to, as the local boy, had to go and uh, smooth things over with the police. Uh, he actually probably even knew the cop, to be fair. Another distraction from our goal at hand. All right, here's what we got. McDonald's. Here's what we got. They got weird landlords. Supposedly, we, got, we could only have one car up there. Now, I guess they're saying we each go at different times. What about him? Sausage Fest 2005 just oh, took McDonald's? another careening okay. splat. Oh, okay. I thought they had. I thought somebody had to go back. I was like, no, come on. See, we we pulled uh, we up lost, to this. We lost the the other two cars. We just pulled up to this store, and now we're conferring with Mike because we are the only two cars nope. left. So this is your place. This is my place. I bought it. It is mine. There's still water in the sink. Dude, there's still stuff in the trunk. Here in South Spence, 2005. Oh, she's showing, baby. Woo! <laughs> That's what happens when somebody cock slaps you. You don't get shit. Fuck the army. Fuck the army. Fuck the army. Fuck the army. <laughs> Dang, Alan can move. Good job, free bird. Nothing you want to shit. Thanks, man. So now that deployment was over, it was time to settle in back to garrison life for the next 10 months in between deployments, and me and Huey decided to hit up some karaoke bars from time to time, actually every Friday and Saturday night after I hit 21. So I hit 21 in mid-June. So between June and November, when we next left, there was quite a bit of karaoke to be had. And a new soldier, his name McClung, and uh, he, Mendez, Castaneda, and I, we decided to uh, go out and celebrate. Careful, YouTube might claim this because it's a perfect dead on Bohemian Rhapsody. It doesn't really matter. So there's uh, some different types of people who sing karaoke. Most people, they have their songs that they like. Sometimes it's just one that they really perfect. Other people like me and Castaneda, we have a library that we like to sing. McClung wanted to sing War, and that's all he knew. He just knew the chorus. Yeah, they didn't know there was any words to the song besides war, huh, good God, what is it good for? And sometimes we would get a bit of a crowd or a, a fan group that knew we were going to come every Friday and Saturday night. This uh, enthusiastic lady in front of Castaneda was a regular as well. So, yeah, what well, was cool? People got into it. We really liked coming out to karaoke. And to continue on with the 
theme of not really knowing any of the song but the main chorus, McClung wanted to sing, you gotta fight for your right to party. But unfortunately, that's the only line of the song he knew. So the hosts were nice enough to give us a recording of uh, McClung and Mendez's version of war. As you can tell, McClung was pretty gone at this point. He got the good God, y'all. Absolutely nothing. Listen to me. I suck. You look serious. You suck. So news about our karaoke exploits spread across the barracks, and people wanted to join. And one night in particular, in fact, uh, I was scheduled to do CQ that night and uh, paid a hundred bucks for a guy named Maggio to cover for me, so that we could go and celebrate karaoke night. And uh, a guy joined us named Cook, who just came to the unit and ended up being one of my best buds in the Army, bar none, period. We still talk a lot to this day, even 20 years later. But this was a night that uh, got interesting because Huey was almost out of the Army. He had uh, back issues and was about to be medically let go. So Huey decided to go three sheets to the wind and just let it all hang out on karaoke night. So I had a soldier by the name of Galt. And uh, the unit was all about making sure your your vehicle was properly secured, and uh, we found that my soldier's vehicle was not secured. Explain, Cook. It was the driver's side rear door. He drove the car after we drove. So we took everything from inside the car and we placed it in poor Gold's trunk. Everything in Galt's trunk is now inside of the car. Including a box of MRE spread everywhere. Yes. Ready to cry. Also, we have pretty much fucked up every mirror available on his car. We have opened all of his maps. His glove box is nearly empty. I would say that this is going to be an excellent evening. Indeed. No, no, don't do that. We left the wipers on. I don't want to scratch him on high. Window. On high. Yeah. And that's your runner. Oh. Give him time to fix this. So Galt was on CQ that night, he's so... Uh, tomorrow, he's got 24 hours off. <laughs> poor Maggio has to give Galt time to fix his four car. And of course, every good artist signs their artwork. Thank you for making all this possible, Maggio. I didn't do it. Think Gassion. <laughs> yes. Wait, what, what's this with the hair, is man? all Gassion's fault because Gassion did I'm not sure lock I, I, the I driver's nap, side okay. rear door of poor Galt's vehicle. And Gassion, should you ever see this vehicle from now on, please realize that when you leave his door unlocked, this happens. Innocent people get hurt. Yes. So, good night was had, and we come back to the barracks, and Huey is toast, and there we see Galt at the CQ desk, and of course we have to apologize for wrecking his car. Lovable Huey. What the hell? Dude, tomorrow I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna be like, what the fuck was I thinking? That's what you're gonna think. What was I thinking? Look at my eyes are all wet. <laughs> you, got, you got Wayne Brady eyes. We're gonna stay here until six o'clock. Whether you like it, like it or not, I don't know. You it's it. we're gonna get hot if you like it or not. We'll keep y'all here until six o'clock. Am I in the army? Yes. Unfortunately. Only for a little bit, Huey. Hang in there. You're almost out, buddy. We'll get that. So we're gonna go wake up Freeburg because unfortunately the place where we sang karaoke night carded that night and Freeberg wasn't 21 just yet he was I think a few months away so uh, we're gonna make sure that Freeberg had a good night even though he had to leave which was unfortunate I really wish he could have been there that night but Huey wants to make up for it but first we find Maggio it's wasted Huey Maggio is he playing Halo? Halo was a big thing back then. He was probably playing Halo hey, while here, Galt was here. down there at the CQ desk. We are now entering the room of John Maggio. Otherwise, great John football. Great football. <laughs> Can you give me a hug? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Can I give you a hug? I'm going to give you a hug. 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 I'm going to give you a h
Wait, I face it, you respond. It's cool, dude. Don't apologize. I love this guy. <laughs> Even though he called me a bitch his first week here, I was like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? He doesn't even know me yet. But now that he knows me, he called me a bitch all he wants. <laughs> Look at my face. Call me a bitch. Bitch. <laughs> I thought you were going to slap me with that hand. I love <laughs> John Nice here. Did you guys talk to Go? Yeah. yeah. He was so fucking pissed off about his car. So what did he say? I'm gonna open up the can and just play it. Hey, Go, <laughs> you need to secure your car every time. Let's go get free break. <laughs> I guess that's one way to knock on the door. Oh no. Oh god. That's why I use your fist. They'll probably do less damage to your head. Keep in mind, this is like at 2.15 and 2.30 in the morning, so, yeah. Freeberg was already asleep at this point. Hey, I want you to come right here and hug me, motherfucker. Motherfucker. Come in. Put on the NPG. Hey, you guys. No, don't. Hit the lights. Hit the lights. I'm sorry, motherfucker. I'm just gonna give you a fucking hug, man. Well, give me one. Fuck. Give me one. Fuck you. He's sleeping in his bear no. suit. Fuck you. Yeah. You get tired. I'm sleeping sorry, in his bear suit with a fucking wooby. That's I wonder great. How Alan... We said club doors, and then on our way Can back. Can I give you a kiss on the forehead? Cause you... there's not much of le left of it, but yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got a fucking six head. You're going bald. I just threw it on the fucking Delta sign, and you got me on tape doing that. That's right, yeah, Dad. And tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm like, holy shit, did I do it? Oh you my! You kiss me after you puke. That's <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, good. I tried. Right. He just went in there too. Wow, that was a good one. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Shout out to that one. What? What the fuck? I'm trying to sleep. God damn it! <laughs> he just kisses Harry has back. No, I didn't. He's showing you his ass. <laughs> and with a little dance, we bid farewell to Huey. He was almost out of the army, and uh, yeah, thanks for everything, man. That that was a fun time. If I ever find myself uh, in your neck of the woods on karaoke night, I'll see you there. So garrison shenanigans over, we prep for our second deployment in our brand new ACUs. But here is my platoon the day that we left. Uh, obviously, I'm not in the picture. I'm the one taking the photo, but everyone was pretty rare, raring to go. So first order of business, hurry up and wait at McCord Air Force Base and wait for our plane out. And what day did we leave? Well, there was a race going on that I missed, and it was the race that Tony Stewart won his second cup title. Just really a bunch of milling about while we were, you know, waiting. I forgot how long we did wait, but uh, it may have been a few hours waiting on our plane. Mood was pretty chill, though. We had, Most of us had done this before, and we weren't going back to Balad. We were actually going to uh, up more up north, so we really wasn't thinking too much of it. First stop across the way, we left from Bangor, Maine, and flew to Shannon, Ireland, and this is the last time that anyone could get alcohol before deployment. So Sergeant Major and the, the commander had a beer. There's Johnson there having the last beer before deployment. Uh, we would be leaving to Kuwait in a few hours' time. And one thing about warning labels in Europe, they're a whole lot bigger than the United States. This was also in Shannon, me, Cook, Johnson, and peeking over the shoulder of Cook back there, there's Solanke. In the interim time, after Shannon, we got to Camp Virginia, Kuwait. And unlike the first time where we had to drive um, and we ended up getting lost, it was a 12-hour convoy just driving around Kuwait. This one, they got us to Virginia right quick and easy. So as soldiers like to do, let's take a, a, a hard look and I'm a soldier picture. Well, I'm not good at that. And here's the panorama from my bunk on that particular, uh, in that tent. They crammed everyone in here. I think the entire company was in one big tent, but not a whole lot of room to move around. And if someone farted next to you, you would know it. There's Russ, old do it. And of course, the most important thing to do to keep dust down is water the dirt. 
So, yeah, we took bottles of water and we spread it out in between all the bunks and whatnot. Tried to keep the floor as clean as we could, but it was Kuwait, man. Dust got everywhere. And, of course, we had to do training while we was there in Virginia. So here was my soldier, Gulp, doing a first aid uh, refresher class while everyone was staying out of the sun. So after about a week in Virginia, it was time to go up north. And my platoon particularly was flying up to Talifar to, uh, to Sykes. So here was all, all the company's uh, bags stacked up, ready to be loaded. And there's a C-130 that dropped us off at Sykes uh, from Pope Air Force Base. So getting off the plane, obviously Army is hurry up and wait. So get off the plane as fast as you can so it can take off back to Kuwait. And uh, we were just standing around um, doing a whole lot of nothing. Uh, my platoon leader, Lieutenant Chan, was up there. She just got uh, graduated from Berkeley and just got her commission. So this was her first deployment. We were shown to our trailers, and let me tell you, that middle row got into a muddy, sloppy mess in the rainy season. It was not fun. You were tracking in so much mud into those trailers. So when our trucks got there, it was inventory time, but there was one small problem. You see how all those doors are open in the back of everyone else's shelter? Well, ours didn't open. It only opened just a little bit, and in our wisdom, we thought, hey, how about we accelerate the truck as fast as we can and then slam on the brakes and shift all the crap in the back forward? That'll get it to open. No, not even that worked. So eventually, we just had to pull the pins off the door hinge itself. You could see Sergeant Smiley there holding up the door. And right about in here is where the door pin would go. You see all the crap that got shifted to the back of the door and was just hanging on to that and then once the door comes off, Cookie's there with the clipboard getting inventory of everything in his particular shelter. Each team had two of those trucks, so he had his inventory to do, and then I had my inventory to do. And then it's time for layout day. The platoon leader goes by, signs for everything in all of those shelters, so everything in, those, in the back of those had to be laid out by the, um, by the list that she had, and it right in the dirt, of course, and it all had to be clean before it went back in. Then we got our mission. We, we knew where we were going to set up. So this is me and my element just hanging from a 15-meter uh, antenna mast, getting the guy wires hooked up. And us uh, standing on the winch is usually not recommended. Or leaving your sledgehammers unattended. But you could always count on Galt and his cheery Disney mindset to greet Mr. Sun. And when you set up, you have two choices of grounding options for your equipment. You could either use the star grounds, which are a bunch of... Uh, six inch stakes that go around the entire truck or you can drive one six foot ground rod into the ground and old Melton decided to use just one hand to drill that six foot ground rod in jo John Henry style and of course you had to bury your phone lines but when you've got ground that doesn't really give eh, you just sort of cover it up with something Luckily, the folks that we relieved already had a building set up, so they were able to pull their truck out. We backed our truck up in, and we just hung our body armor on the wall for easy access. I didn't have an iPod at that time. Huey did. Castanet was all about that iPod, but I just had my big fat CD wallet, which is good because I kept my PlayStation games in there too, and I still had my laptop with the emulator on it. But Melton was able to keep himself entertained with uh, less technological means. So, Nelson, tell me, what do you think of your evening without electronics? I think it's a step in the right direction. I think every signal unit needs to teach their soldiers how to deal without electronics. Boy, for no electronics, what are you using? Um, um, well, uh, ignore the man behind the curtain and answer the question. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that damn spider hole. Yeah, Cook didn't seem to mind the place either. And when it's time for haircut, if you're going all the way down, you might as well have some fun. Of course, when it was time for others to get their haircut, I put in my own spin as well. And now Galt's ready to go to Bristol. And we were joined by Sergeant Cooper a little bit into our deployment, and uh, Sergeant Cooper took his job seriously. And Cook's going to demonstrate what it's like to wake up Binky. We are going to play a joke on Binky and cause an alarm in the shelter, which he won't know how to fix. So Cookie is my accomplice. He's going to push the button. And here we go. Hey, Nelson! What's up? 
Uh, anything happen today? Sorry, and is mad at me because I let Cookie go to chow at 5.30. And I Why? guess that's against the rules. I'm like, and he's like, what time is your phone? About seven. Hour and a half? That's how much, that's how long you give me? Yeah. <laughs> Post reaction. God damn it. That's he, all I have to say. It's God damn it. He was actually smart enough. I can't believe it. I'm really impressed. You I don't know what? Think it was that. He saw you through there. I could see you through there. And he's like, what the fuck was that? So he starts walking by looking. Walks, looks up in the shelter and then looks over there and he thinks he saw you. Damn it. Well, it, it's a positive oh, sign that Banky kind of knows what's going on. We was hoping for screaming and shouting in general, but we didn't get it, so. We will find other ways. Maybe if I just murdered the guy. 87 easy steps to killing Binky. How to kill Binky the Clown in 87 easy steps. Step one, beat him over the head with something large and painful. Yes, yes. Step two, bind hands and feet. Step three, once again, bash over the head with something large and painful. Pretty much every odd step is bash over the head with something Ooh, large and painful. Night shift don't do shit, he said. So, we gotta take out the trash. They purposely yeah. filled up the trash so we can take it out. Because well, night shift don't do shit. That's always been a night shift yeah. responsibility is taking out the trash. <laughs> but night shift don't do shit. Even though no, we don't. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. Lieutenant Chan paid us a visit once or twice while we were there, but as we were signal guys, we were also tech nerds, so everyone had a laptop and everyone busted it out on shift. And as a matter of fact, here it is. Holy crap. God, how did I lug this thing around for a year? But after a few months at Sykes, our mission was done, and we were heading to Mosul, LSA Diamondback. And we were pretty much in the condition that we had to carry everything we owned onto that helicopter. So a few of us were loaded in, Cookie included, along with Binky and Melton, Lieutenant Chan, and Sergeant Thomas, who just came to us from the 82nd Airborne. And everything Sergeant Thomas did, it was, well, in 82nd, we did it this way, and well, in 82nd, we did it that way. Well, this is 29th, man. We don't have such high standards. <laughs> Of course, getting to Diamondback, they didn't have our trailers ready for us or anything, so as soon as we land, it was hurry up and now wait. Just sit around and wait for us to figure out what's going on. So just sitting around, not that hard, right? Well, it was for Palmer. He, even doing nothing, he does something stupid. And of course, when we get there, the first thing the company wants us to do is inventory on our combat load, so laying out all of our rounds so they could count every single one of them. Of course, Solanke had a lot to say about us just laying out ammo. And I did too, but they fixed that. So the purpose of us moving from Sykes to Mosul is they didn't need as many tactical signal shelters providing phones. They needed internet lines and voice over IP for their nipper and sipper, their non-secure and their secure internet. And they moved us to the server room, or at least me, so I got to meet a whole different group of people when I went to Bravo Company. So I was on lease from Delta to Bravo Company, and Gozion came with me. I met Patrick, Sergeant Barnett, and there's Collins. Collins was a guy that uh, he and I hit it off really well. He knew that I liked NASCAR, and I hated Greg Biffle, and that's really all he knew. <laughs> so anytime Greg Biffle would win back then, he would say, It's Biffle! So uh, I fired back with uh, Right You Are Ken from the most the Extreme Elimination Challenge on Spike TV. So he became Ken, I became Biffle. There's Sergeant Johnson down there with Moore and Miller. Speaking of Moore, what are you doing with that stick, Lysol, and a lighter? Well, you're trying to make your own sword, of course. 
<laughs> this is why bored soldiers are dangerous. Who wasn't in that photo who are regulars in the server room were Sergeant Merle and Rainey, who you might remember from the, uh, the night we left Scuba Steve at Hooters. Um, and all of a sudden, wrestling just came a thing. They needed to vent their energy. Why are you trying to get away from me, Sergeant Merle? I am a boy! Luckily, we were up most of the time, but things did take a turn one night when, uh, as you can see, this is not ideal. This is what we saw inside that server room. So local nationals had to drill into the wall to fix the wiring and get our lights back up. That was an interesting night. We also had this huge antenna out of the back of the building we were at, and Sergeant Barnett has to go up there to install a brand new antenna. That we dangled on 550 cord to hoist it up there. And he had to go way the crap up there. And I'm glad that's not me. I'm, I'm scared of heights, especially like ladders. And that, that would suck. And Cook always fashionable with his pimp hat. While, of course, still doing classes and general conferences and whatnot, Solanke knew I had my camera with me. So, Nelson, what are you doing up here on this rooftop in Iraq? Well, the grass has to go. The grass has to go. And how are we removing the grass from the top of this roof? From a long shot down the car floor. Beautiful. That's, that's gorgeous. So, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we obviously have the right equipment for this job. And we are also the only roof within 100 miles to have any grass on top of it. Lucky us. Yes. Take a look at our roof, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Don't cut the cable. Dude. All of this grass must go. Oh my God. Welcome to life in the army. Go, Nelson, go. This works well, don't you think? 
I love my job. Army of one. Progression. So, after half an hour of work, got a big pile. That is all we have. Hey. This is freaking beautiful. End of day one. Da, 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 da. Look at how clean this is. Wow. But guess what? We're not done. All of this. All of this. Oh, uh, we're still going. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. You too can have this much fun. Join the army. And much like the barracks, I live right next door to Freeburg, who uh, played me in poker just once. And he also found out what happens if you light the end of a chem stick. That looks badass. So we get toward the end of our year in uh, Diamondback. And uh, unfortunately for me, fortunate for Delta Company and Cookie here, uh, they get to go home a month early because they weren't needed, but we server room folks were. So while Cookie and the rest of my former compadres went back to Fort Lewis to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, I had to stay in Iraq. And that leads me to the story with Sergeant Eugene. So Sergeant Eugene was also a neighbor on uh, the other side in the trailers. And Sergeant Eugene had bought a bike from the PX. And he was getting ready to leave with me one month after Delta had left. So there's only like five of us former Delta, Delta Company guys left behind with Bravo. And Sergeant Eugene was talking with the guys relieving us. And he said, hey, if you want to buy my bike... It's like 25 bucks. The retail on it was like 100, 150, I don't really remember. But either way, Sergeant Eugene was giving him like 75% off. And the guy snarked back to Sergeant Eugene and said, Well, if you're going to leave it behind and leave anyway, why am I going to pay you? I'll just take it for free. So Sergeant Eugene uh, made sure that the bike he got was not what he thought it was going to be. So our last day in Iraq, we were flying out the next day. Sergeant Eugene gave us permission to crush the bike. All right, whenever you're ready, dude. Ready? Yep. Watch out. Oh my God. Six is up. No running! <laughs> oh, Let's go to lunch. We'll be back by the time he's done. <laughs> okay. All the carnage. The year in celebration. Hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Don't hurt me. Oh, my. No, dude, my nuts. My nuts! Ow. It's reverberating. Fucking okay. shit. <laughs> go, Freebird, go. Ride good things. I'm not going anywhere. How about a hockey stick? Fuck 
give pedals. Well, guys, I'm gonna go bike riding with the Star Major. Let's beat it. Beat it! I'm gonna say, now everybody gather around. Bang, we'll take a picture. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And here's the fruits of our labor. What was left of the bike with a nice sprinkling of fire extinguisher just to, to, to top it all off. So I hope the new guys like their new bike. So the next day, we were leaving on a C-130. Uh, I got to really know Sergeant Eugene during this time, as well as Sergeant Gilson. We really hadn't ever been on a team before, and we've, we, all three of us were at 29th the entire time I was there, but I never really talked to Sergeant Gilson or uh, Sergeant Eugene, so this was a, a good way to sort of get to know those guys. At the very end of my career, I only had three months left at this point as well as the other server room guys, Moore and Collins. And you could tell what viral video just uh, hit the internet when we were uh, in Iraq in 2006. But back in Kuwait, now we were able to uh, get some, even though it was, it was McDonald's. I mean, it wasn't stateside McDonald's, but still Big Mac and fries, which uh, I could tell Collins really enjoyed. So we find ourselves in the same tents that we started this adventure in, but this time wrestling is broken out and Sergeant Barnett is our target. All the server room guys uh, give him his just desserts after all this time. And there we go, a zip-tied Sergeant Barnett. And here we go again. This is round 36. All oh, right, you are, Ken. Get your hands off of it. That, that'd be, that'd be oh, Sergeant Moore. Yeah, Sergeant Moore. All right, let's go. Yeah, bro, you suck. Yeah, so, there you go. No, yeah, I'll I just fucking... Tap it louder. Tap it louder. Damn, I won't fall out. Sharpshooter! Texas Cloverly! Give him the Texas Cloverly! Hold it! Give him the Texas Cloverly! Boston Crab is that. Boston Crab! Oh, the big flag right there. And between the wrestling matches, we were able to get some work done. All of our bags lined up, ready to get on a bus. But that line was just what we could carry. Everything else is going on a pallet. But that was the server room team that I was a part of, and they, they were really welcoming, um, which made the transition from my company to theirs a whole lot easier. One shot on the plane, coming back to the United States, and we were flying directly into McCord Air Force Base. It was awful handy having an Air Force Base like three miles from Fort Lewis, uh, and I got a picture of Sergeant Eugene looking nice and relaxed. And landing in the daytime back at McCord, right where we left one year before, and second deployment was officially over, and I was then on my 90 days until clearing. So once we were back from deployment, myself and Solanke were on a 90-day timer, which means that we were out of the Army in 90 days. We had both been stop-lost, meaning our contract would have expired right in the middle of that last deployment. So when you're back from deployment, you have 90 days to clear. So I was in civilian clothes most of the time, still attending formations and whatnot at the company, and I saw this rainbow. There's Collins back there. And uh, it was a nice sort of bookend. To the military career. Of course, coming back, much karaoke was had and Solanke joined us. And even Cookie decided to join in and Piano Man was his song of choice. And the last time I went to karaoke, I had an, uh, a little message written in frost on my car on the rear, uh, wouldn't call it spoiler, but uh, on the deck lid. Really? Gay. And not in a good way. But we were not immune to the day room cleanings and meetings, so... Uh, yeah, this is just us in the day room waiting on stuff to happen. Myself and Solanke were tied together with our with our clearing. We, we both had to do the same things to get out, so we spent a lot of time together going through and getting stuff, including CIF turn-in. But we still had to do our part. Weapons still had to be clean, even when we were in civilian clothes. So Thomas was cleaning his saw, 
and I was cleaning my M16 with a few days to go. One person I didn't get to mention was Sergeant Slay. I got to meet Sergeant Slay on CQ in, on the second deployment, and uh, he got me interested into anime. Barbosa flew in from Las Vegas. Uh, he had gotten out of the Army after the first deployment, but when he heard that we were all back, he paid us a visit. I used to have it like that here. Why would you change it? Well, I cut it because I couldn't do anything with it. Take the picture! It's video! Oh, fuck video. Hey, look at my hair. Don't I look like a complete tool? Yes. <laughs> Days in the motor pool while you're clearing is pretty chill. And that takes me to the last day I was in the army. In this video, uh, Russ and Cookie and I just got back from go-karting. And Russ was going to take a spin on my G25, which I had purchased a few months ago. I still have that G25. Still alive and kicking. Good on you, Logitech. What? <laughs> it's, it's Russ and Cookie. Yo, yo. We just got back from racing. Yeah. Six was great until it turned into a piece of shit. All my carts were great. I can drive them. <laughs> Mine was fun. I got the two loosest ones on the track, though. And now Russ and possibly Cookie will engage in some Daytona or... Arr, 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 matey. All right. You are a pirate. So the last person I talked to while I was in was actually Sergeant Eugene. Uh, there was a big ski trip. That day I was clearing, the motor pool was pretty much empty. There were only like maybe 10 or 15 of us there on the day that I actually signed my terminal leave paperwork and left. Uh, Sergeant Eugene was part of the group that got transferred from Delta Company to Bravo, and we got to see all of our buddies go home a month early while we were there with Bravo Company. And they passed a rule that you couldn't even go to Chow without a battle buddy. Uh, so he and I were on opposite shifts, but we both always made sure that we were each other's battle buddy no matter what, to go to Chow or the gym or the uh, Internet Cafe, whatever it was. And I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, I didn't like you a bit until that last month when I really saw that you were good, you were an okay guy, that you did what needed to be done. And that really resonated with me. It made me wonder, how did people actually see me when I was in the Army? As you could tell, I was the guy always with the camera. And to have Sergeant Eugene, who was, you know, a lifer, a through-and-through -through soldier, always doing the right thing, for him to come up and say that I wasn't so bad actually made me feel pretty good that in the end, maybe I, uh, I justified myself there a bit. And thus ended my military career in February 2007. So all in all, am I glad I joined the Army? Of course. It, it was a good experience. And uh, I got college money out of it, which was my primary goal. When the whole thing started back in June of 2001, I said, I need money for college. And I did. I went to college and graduated with a degree now, thanks to the Army. Would I do it again, knowing everything that I know now? That's a tougher question to ask. I would be in my own head a lot, thinking... Is this the right thing? Did I make this decision? Or, oh, I didn't want that to happen. Let's try to change it and end up getting myself killed or something. I don't know. But all in all, if you've stuck around this whole thing, thanks for watching. Uh, that was four years, eight months, and 15 days of my life compressed into photos and videos. And what a ride it was. But 20 years ago, I'm glad I was able to remember all the things I was able to remember and even though people might have hated me for pointing the camera in their face, I'm glad 20 years down the road I was actually able to do that. Piece of shit or not. Nothing you want to